Kelly, uh, looks like you've got some uh, ADOT uh, uni thread mm -hmm. you're going to use. Olive. Olive ADOT. I'm going to use, because we're doing a flashback, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, pearl. This is lateral scale, but it could be any type of pearl mylar tinsel mm -hmm. that you want. I'm going to use a regular uh, pheasant tail. You can use any black, uh, green. I, I was using green this afternoon quite a bit. Uh, a little bit of micro copper, a little bit of hen hackle. Now this micro know. copper wire, this is a, a new stuff from Wamsi. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh, ultra wire is what yep. they call it. Yep. Great stuff. Yeah, real fine. You know, it's kind of, used to be a little hard to find real, mm. real fine ribbing for these things. Yeah, we now and, have. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead. What I'm going to do, this is a pheasant tail, but because it's a flashback, I'm going to have a little bit different um, sequence than I would normally. So I'm going to just pick a a little bit of tail here off you the side. you put a bead on this or not? No, I'm just going to do a straight. Uh, if you wanted to put a bead, you'd put it on first. Right. Everybody put beads on these traditional patterns, mm -hmm. and they go a little deeper than what a true emerger is. Right. A true emerger sometimes is only an inch under the surface. Mm -hmm. And uh, at, at this point, I find uh, that if I'm really in the heat of the hatch, that I don't really want a bead-headed one. Right. And, Boy, you go into a fly shop and you see nothing but bead heads. Yeah, it's getting harder to, to do anything, you know, find them that aren't right. all bead heads. And I agree with you. It's a lot of times, as long as I'm fishing lead uh, as, an, as an indicator for style, I don't care about it so right. much. And especially when I'm doing the flashbacks, I get that little flash I need. Right. This morning when we were fishing, I don't think I got a fish on the bead head. No, I and got the same thing with All on these. Mine. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take the, I got three or four, uh, fibers of pheasant tail here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the hook you know I like to use this every time I tie a fly of any sort I use the hook as a gauge and I'm and I like the tails to be about the length of the body I'm going to use a small pinch wrap here Get this out of my way small pinch wrap and I've got that there the, the tail and I'm going to take a little piece of this lateral scale um, which is just a mylar, you know, this is a, this one happens to be a little crinkly. It's actually designed for uh, lateral lines on big streamers, saltwater streamers, or anything that you would just want a bunch of stuff hanging back there. And I tied this in first because it's going to have, there's going to be more to it. Now I'm going to take a little bit bigger piece of pheasant tail here, a little bit bigger gob, I don't know, maybe eight, ten fibers here. And I'm going to tie these in tip first. This is going to be our body. I get asked a lot which way to tie in the pheasant tail. Oh, uh, you tie it in tip first, and the reason you do that is that you're trying to build bulk to the abdomen so it's tapered right. forward. Right. So we're going to tie that in, and tie that in on the side. There's a little pinch wrap here, uh, making sure we're back where we need. And we're going to take this fine wire, copper wire. Now I like to tie the copper on the back side of the fly, mm. and the reason for that is so. When I start wrapping around, I get a complete wrap underneath before I, it hits the materials I'm going to wrap on top, and that way it doesn't roll it over a little bit. That's a great tip. So that's going to go back there. <clears throat> Notice I didn't take any of this stuff off yet. One, it, I think it builds a better uh, taper. And the other thing I like to do when I do this is when I take the copper, I, I come up and I bend it back and I took my fingernail and I just pushed against it and then I do a couple wraps there before I cut that off and that allows that there's no way for the copper to pull up right. that way yeah. and That's it's just a, just a little bit of a locking point I'm going to trim this uh, alright a little half hitch here and you use basically you use two-thirds abdomen, one-third thorax. Okay, that's good. Good so, rule of thumb. So now I'm going to wrap, I'm going to spin this just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to turn this just a little bit, spin this so I can keep the fibers going in one direction. Just roll it at the top a little bit there. Yeah. Lock that in. <clears throat> now I'm going to make sure that copper's around the back side. Now I'm going to take this flashback, 
and I'm going to do a little pinch wrap and try to get that just held. It's a little tricky getting that in there, especially just a little bit long. And just, you know, I want that to be on top. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut that off just a little bit. And then I have trouble using a rotary to do this, so I use it by hand. I just, I tend to have the flash, or the crystal flash, uh, has a tendency to want to roll on me if I use the other one, so I just use it by hand on that. Snap that off. Now this is forward. I'm going to just fold this back. This is going to be my flash over the wing case. So I got to fold this back yep. here. And then I'm going to take a piece of peacock curl here and uh, tie that in. Cut that off up here, leaving room for your head. And then I'm going to wrap this in here. I think the peacock curl has a lot to do with the effectiveness of this fly. I read a study once, and I think it was done at Michigan State, but it was on uh, the spectrum that a trout's eye sees in. It was a rainbow trout. And they said that the, the peacock curl, especially because it's prismatic effect that the trout sees, uh, and I think they said two different spectrums than we do, and they said that was part of the reason that the uh, peacock curl was so effective. All I know is on a lot of flies that yeah. are very good. Now I'm going to put a, a small hen hackle on. Mm -hmm. uh, this, you know, and I'm not even sure this is all that critical. You know, you've seen, I used to see a lot of uh, pheasant tails back in the late 70s, early 80s, and very seldom you saw a hackle on them. Right. I like to put a, just a turn or two a hackle. I've seen them tied with all different styles. I've got that hackle going back, so it's they're leaning back towards the back of the bend of the hook. And, that fly style. Yep. And I'm going to give it just a couple wraps. Doesn't, it's not all that critical. I don't matter of fact, I'm not sure you'd have to have it. Can't hurt. No, you could always cut it off if you right. don't like it. Yeah, you just don't want to put too much of it right. on. Right. Not a dry fly. Exactly. So then I'm going to just splay that across there like that. And you know, people are afraid to pinch around and squeeze their flies. You need to, sometimes you got to just manhandle it a little bit. Or if you're a woman, woman handle it. That's right. Now I'm going to take this mylar, come right over top again. Yep. Got to be and, pulled tight. Yep, and then I'm going to, after I've got, I have about three wraps on there, I've got things where I like it, and then I give this a stretch. Yeah. And if you see that, you can, and I'm sure that we can see it with the camera here, you can stretch this stuff. I don't know if you, if they, can you see that? There you go. See how far I stretch yep. that? When you stretch that out, I stretched it, just broke it off, so I had it all finished off there. And then we'll just whip this finished. Do a hand whip finish? Yep. When I started tying, they didn't have the tools and, uh, you know, to the whip finish tools. And then when I got around to them, they were, I just had already learned to do it myself. Yeah. Hey, then, Kelly, that's what I was using uh, under the dropper, up the mm -hmm. hopper dropper. Yep. 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 That and uh, some Copper Johns. And I was using one like this. I just scaled it down a little bit. I was using an 18 and a 20, but I really think that little bit of flash in the fly makes a big difference.